You're still watching Ways. Um, in the Republic of Benin, today is Fête du Voudon, a day also known as Traditional Religious Day. This day celebrates the nation's history surrounding the West African region of Voudon. The celebration begins with the slaughter of a goat in honor of the spirits, <laughs> followed with singing, dancing, and drinking lots and lots of liquor, especially gin. Interesting. <laughs> I, I have a question. First, no, but are they Christians in Benin Republic? I think they do a lot of traditional Is it just religion. A part? Oh. Yes, they do a lot of um, they do a lot of traditional religion because I, I used to have a, a, a Beninuan as mm. my help, mm. and he, he would wake up in the morning and be burning incense. I had to tell him, Oga, can house. you stop this incense? <laughs> Fact. He was burning the for him. You know? <laughs> wow. Yeah, he was burning incense and all. So they they practice those um, and you know they have a lot because we have a lot of Beninois as well working mm. in the farmland for yeah. us and all that. You know they have not resumed work because okay, because it, of this they have wow. to. Yeah, it's, it's a big thing. So this is big big Christmas. Oh. Yeah, it's a big deal. And also, you know what even caught my attention with this um, festival? They actually attract foreigners coming to. So it's a tourist attraction. For lots of foreigners, Voodoo, Voodoo, yes. Voodoo. So me, I'm just thinking. We have <laughs> loads of festival in Nigeria. So we have the AO. We have the yeah. New Year festival. We have, you know. So why can't we package it in a way that it? Well, AO is already attractive. It is attractive, yeah. Yeah, you know. But true. I'm just saying that we should make it a lot more. I agree. So in the past, there mm -hmm. was something called the Fancy Carnival yes, in Lagos Island, and it was modeled um, after the Brazilian yes, Carnival. Yes, and yes. it used to attract a lot of people. That's like, why did it stop it? I, you know, so I don't know. It, it used to be a lot of fun when I was mm. younger. Hopefully, we're trying to yeah, get right, the right. commissioner yes, for tourism, yes, right, in yes, Lagos. Yes, we would like to have. We would like to have her because we need to talk about this. We have we have so many things, you know. So are you say even you if, it's, that if it's to do uh, juju as well. Let us do our juju and commercial. Yes, money 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 from from I mean, this is a time when you know the government is looking to increase government revenue. Yes, and reduce the dependency so on oil. Instead of using this so let's food package to kill tourism and voodoo. In, yes, in every form. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> and, you know, earn some effects whilst we're at it. Yeah, so, so. so Temi Tokwe, <laughs> it's up to you now. So what did you find for us in the news today? Okay, so Operation Amoteku has hmm. been in the news, right? Amoteku? Um, Amoteku is Yoruba for leopard. Did you know that? Mm, I just well, found out that. Yes. Okay. So, so, okay, but you're Yoruba girl, no? No, no, my name is Chinasa Ken. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so <laughs> disclaimer, please. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, this is really um, the code name that was coined for the operations of the Western Nigerian Security Network. Okay. So it's essentially the governors in the southwest region of the country resulting to like self-help to tackle the security challenges that we've had in the country. And I find this particularly interesting. I'm very positive about it because the truth is um, the security challenges are there. And with the population expansion in the country, um, insurgency in some you know, regions, some geopolitical zones, um, increasingly we're seeing a lot of young people out of school. Mm -hmm. um, unemployment rate is very high at 23.1%. Yeah. Yeah. So all those things directly impact insecurity. So I like that you know we're making strides to tackle this menace um, the only challenge or the concern that I have is how would the security operatives be incentivized so you're bringing young people together um, you're giving them, them arms they'll have machetes they'll have guns mm. so what's the wage structure how much would you be paying them we need to ensure that they stay motivated so there's unity of purpose. Before we create a monster. Otherwise, mm. they'll do the exact opposite, opposite of what you know, they're supposed to do. Well, you know, Lagos State had something the, um, the previous governor, Governor Ambody, mm -hmm. initiated, which is the Neighborhood Watch but, yes. right. for Lagos yes. State government, yes. you understand? And, and mm -hmm. I believe, honestly speaking, for Effective us to tackle, measure. yes, for us to tackle, I, I believe in, in state policing, yes. you know, I communal agree. policing. Yes. Yes. I, li I believe that yeah. that principle is so strong. Strongly, mm -hmm. you know. So I just, f I want to, I, I want to see how they would make and manage it because you see, most times the apprehensions a lot of people get with all of these things mm -hmm. is that they begin to use them as political exactly. um, weapons, you know. When it when it That's comes to um, so every four years they be, yeah. they come out and they be, yes. they come and political threats to, to, to the you know. community so, that's supposed to be so protected. To my mind, it's a kind of restructuring along regional lines. Mm. Um, 
in a way. But the governors have come out to say that it's not supposed to replace policing mm -hmm. as we know it. It's just supposed to complement the mainstream security agencies so yeah. and that there's no economic value to them at this time. So fingers crossed. Let's take so a hopeful. Vote. Hopeful. Yeah. That, okay. Yes, Secure that it's really security. just law and order. That's important to them. At Amen this time. to that. Amen well, to that. Well, <laughs> Chinna, so over to you. Okay, so I, I have news from the international scenes. Okay. <laughs> CNN reportedly has um, stated <laughs> that Meghan Markle has relocated to Canada. Mm -hmm. Only for a few days, people. She's coming back. So uh, this is on the back of the announcement that herself and Prince Harry made a couple days ago saying that they'd like to step back from their senior um, their senior responsibilities or their what was it again? Yeah. What does that, that senior... even mean? Like what does it mean to step So they back? want Royal. to gain financial independence, independence is yeah. what they say. Yeah. So I think that again this is maybe stepping back from the the focal points as royals and just maybe have less responsibilities that's been No, I think for me if you ask me, I think Megan has always been a very vocal person when mm -hmm. it comes to airing her opinion and you know the rules of the royal family in fact they had Can to shut stifling. down her instagram yes, page they shut down all her social media engaged. so you are only mm -hmm. they, you, any communicator will come out will come out through a a, a an so, official yes, platform from, you know so which all didn't of happen this time which is part of what has upset the, <laughs> the royal family because they didn't even have any yeah zero clue. no no clue yeah. you know it just came so out so all of this restraint you know that she's you know she's having i don't think she is sitting well in her system some would argue so like the need talk where, that you knew all you the rules and idea. regulation you know i keep saying a girl this. has the right to be free <laughs> and i don't think i do i see i, I totally disagree and you know Megan and Harry couple crush number two I think that who's number one and number Michelle and Obama okay <laughs> you want to know number three number three shall I say yes Susu and Banky Aww. okay <laughs> be crushing very well <laughs> You know? So, yeah, but I think it's unfair that people sort of are putting this on Meghan. I think it was a joint decision. Mm -hmm. Harry has, as we know, has always been that rebellious mm -hmm. little black sheep of the royal yeah, family. So, absolutely. guess what? I think they're both happy. And apparently they were very welcomed in Vancouver and Canada mm -hmm. over the holidays. And it's probably what's informed the decision to now have a home in North America and the United Kingdom. There's nothing wrong with that. But you mentioned about uh, Madame Tussauds, you know, bringing oh, down... Oh, yeah, so the reaction has been, oh, gosh, vile. Like, people... Was... I think that was really petty. So it was they, too extreme. Uh, extreme. Because they're royalty down. is in the blood. It's not exactly. whether the person is, you know... Thank you. Deleted. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously targeted at Meghan. They're not happy. The black girl has come to mess up our royal family structure. <laughs> but anyways... Anyways, we'll see how that story develops. You know, I'm, because I'm watching closely. I, I, I'm, I'm hoping because she's actually vocal. It's she hard. Is. I know. I'm saying it because for me, it's hard to keep me mm -hmm. in a particular regimen. I, I, like I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Yeah. You know. I wouldn't. Absolutely. I wouldn't so try. Had to become someone else. Else. Yeah. You know. And it must have been that's, messing with her pretty, mind. I yeah. can imagine. Yeah. That's pretty difficult. All right. So my, I have a very, 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 very exciting news. You know, to share because it's coming from my own Nigeria, <laughs> you know? Um, two sisters that were joined in the chest and abdomen, um, what's their name, Messi and Goodness Ede, were successfully separated by a team of 78 um, members, I mean, 78 doctors in the in national hospital in Nigeria. And guess what? This hospital is government run. That deserves fact, that a was, round I mean, of that's, applause. You know, so the chief excited. pediatric surgeon said, I think they had started the process in November. You know, his name is Emmanuel Ame. They had started the process in November. They didn't say anything. They wanted to successfully do this surgery before, you know, they, um, so the, the young girls, they're doing well because because they just discharged them six weeks after oh, wow. surgery. So They're doing well. I saw the babies. You were looking so pretty, Fantastic. you know, and I'm happy that it happened in Nigeria. In Nigeria. You know, we're talking so about possible. healthcare and yes. all of that. A lot of people are running away because they mm -hmm. feel that our healthcare is not. Mm -hmm. But trust me, things are going to change I in the healthcare wait to sector. See that. I had a very thing. deep conversation with someone I know that works closely in the healthcare sector. I was saying, see, what will happen in the healthcare sector in Nigeria? It's going to blow our mind so we should just be patient i think we should be very very optimistic yeah. you know in nigeria that's good and that's this comforting. is a very good story and i'm happy and i say congratulations to their parents you know yeah. mercy and goodness we wish you speedy 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 Absolutely. recovery and everything yeah. that you know Amen. and they start to grow in health yeah. as well so 
That's a very good news. It is, absolutely. <laughs> very I'm heartwarming. So yeah. I'm, I'm very particular and, you know, passionate about healthcare. Mm. And, you know, the delivery and distribution of primary health care, just prime, malaria, yeah. absolutely. Know, so for something so to hear something this groundbreaking, yeah. like they actually co-joined like internal organs. Yes, that's, that's, that's a big deal. So big deal. And they I'm did so that excited. surgery, you know, so yeah, we give them, so. all right, again. Yay. <laughs> all right, so <laughs> Marcus Smith joins us after the break. Please stay with us, we'll be right back.